Dragon's Dogma 2 has been out two weeks now, and I think it would be fair to say it's been a pretty polarizing release. Performance issues and light pay-to-progress microtransactions have created a backdrop for a very divided player base. Personally, I'm having an absolute blast, and with the recent rumored leak of an upcoming DLC, it got me thinking, what things would I like to see in the game to improve the experience? So, let's jump right on into my top 6 updates and improvements that could be added to the game to make it an even better experience. First up is the current state of the end game. Now, whilst I find it quite interesting in terms of the way Capcom chose to implement different endings, for want of a better phrase, I cannot say I share the same opinion when it comes to considering the actual content. I found the end game portion of the game quite laborious, torturous, and just generally a bit boring if I'm honest. It it actually reminded me a little bit of older Zelda games in the sense that when you first complete the opening portion of the game, you're often moved in time after some sort of near cataclysmic event had happened. A link to the past and Ocarina of Time fans will know what I'm talking about here. This propelled the game forwards in terms of the plot and the excitement, and unfortunately, I just feel that Dragon's Dogma 2 has got this so, so wrong. Without spoiling people, it essentially felt like a very drawn out fetch quest and escort quest for an MMO, which with some fairly generic boss-like encounters and an absolutely terrible save mechanic tacked onto it that was some sort of attempt at creating artificial difficulty. With this in mind, I would very much like to see future iterations of DD2 bake in some true endgame experiences, much akin to those from Dark Arisen, and perhaps borrowing from other tried and tested systems from other successful titles. I think that I speak for the vast majority of the community when I say that Bitter Black Isle in Dragon's Dog a Dark Arisen was an absolutely exceptional addition to the base game. It offered challenge in the form of different encounters and really gritty dungeon crawling vibes. The itemization and loot system implemented meant that you had a reason to constantly keep playing through the content again and again, and this has stood the test of time, folks. It almost felt like its own sort of mini campaign or game within Dragon's Dogma, and it's one of the most beloved aspects of the franchise to date. Quite shocked that Capcom didn't actually include anything similar to this in the base version of DD2, given how vocal the community have been about how much they enjoyed this area of Dark Arisen. And I will be even more shocked if something similar or more developed is not included in a content release in the future. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Bitter Black Isle had exclusive item drops that took the form of what I would say is similar to unidentified loot in games like Diablo. You need to identify them by interacting with the purification system. This costed Rift Crystal crystals and you could get different classes of this loop from armors, weapons and general novelty items. Within that, you also had three tiers to each of these things, so there was this element of excitement when you got, for example, a level three weapon and revealed what it was. I think, again, this would be such a great way to enhance the scope for replayability and gives us another use, a very useful use, might I add, for Rift Crystals. The way in which they implemented the save mechanic in the end game in DD2 felt to me like they were trying to create a kind of roguelite vibe, and I actually think upon reflection that this could be pretty cool for the to explore in the future. Secondly, and speaking of difficulty, the scaling feels very off in Dragon's Dogma 2, and I actually think this is one of the main issues the game has. There comes a point quite early in the playthrough, I think it was around 25 or 30 for me, where you just seem to be absolutely decimating most mobs in the game. Once you know what you're doing against Drakes, and once you know what you're doing against other big enemies, you can very quickly start to steamroll them. I felt the same in the end game, and I was really disappointed with how NG Plus started and how it didn't alleviate this issue at all. I don't find it enjoyable, folks, walking through NG plus type adventures so easily. And I feel they're adding either a hard mode, much like Dragon's Dogma 1 had, or some sort of scaling system that kicks in once you've begun a new game cycle would make this game so much more interesting to keep engaging with. I've been playing the game without pawns and not allowing myself to use huge hitting skills like Helm Splitter or other such attacks on other vocations. And this does make the game feels so much more interesting at higher levels. 
difficulty and gameplay variety in mind. I'd love to see Capcom embrace the modding community and see if there's anything worthwhile that they could come up with to provide more variety in the game. Lords of the Fallen developers Hexworks are currently working on adding randomizers and seeds into the game itself. I'm unsure if this exact idea would work in DD2, but something like this would be interesting at least as a foundational consideration for Capcom to look at. Now, this leads us on nicely to this rumored expansion which is titled the dragon princess and is boasting of current highlights such as $30 DLC that will be the biggest one Capcom has ever made to date. It's been apparently developed alongside the main game, so take that one for however you will. I'm not sure about that myself. And it apparently builds upon the main storyline focusing on a female arisen chosen by another dragon in a swamp slash tundra like area based on areas of Northern Europe. And they've named this Galacia. This leads me on to my third point, strong expansion releases. I'd like to be really clear before I say this, that I would have no issue with Capcom making DLC for this game moving forward, provided it is substantial and meaningful in both its direction and its content. If what has been said so far about this expansion is true, then it's a huge tick for me. I'd love it if Capcom kept releasing content for this game to an incredibly high standard and quality that is akin to things like Monster Hunter World Iceborne, for example. Coming in at four, a quick punchy one here, folks. This leak touches on an area which I think is also really lacking. I wanted more biomes and areas to explore, and I felt as a next-gen RPG, DD2 fell a bit short here. That isn't to say I didn't absolutely love and still do very much enjoy exploring the world that we've been given. I just think there is so much untapped potential here and opportunity to explore Band on both the fantastical plot and storyline is endless, quite frankly. And in at five, vocation development. Does anyone else feel like there is potential within each vocation for some rebalancing and modification of how skills perform and behave? There is, of course, always choice in what skills you use. This is, after all, folks, a single player game and no one is forcing you to use the most optimized skills available. But it does feel like there doesn't seem to be much point in using some skills in the vast majority of the vocations if you're going for the most effective setup. I think it would be fantastic if Capcom could perhaps provide some sort of buff to underperforming skills from various trees closer in line with top performers in each vocation. Maybe not to the same level as things like Helm Splitter, Maelstrom or Meteoron, but you catch my drift. If Capcom do release content-rich DLCs, I would love them to build upon existing vocation skill sets and augments to further increase the range of options we have at our disposal. I do think this is particularly true of augments. There is a lot of wasted opportunity in my opinion and I would love to see them fine tune this system to open up a little bit more build diversity. Of course, this also leads me into another major talking point that has been rolling since far before the launch. New vocations. Will Capcom add more as time goes on? I certainly think they will and looking at this mock-up on Reddit really does show how many different directions they could take things. Would Capcom consider bringing back the Mystic Knight? Are there any other nutty combinations that they could come up with? What do you think, folks? Sound off in the comments below with any ideas, along with any other thoughts about things that they could add to improve the game as a whole. Number six, mob diversity. This was a concern of mine, which I highlighted in a previous video before launch. And unfortunately, I feel like it has carried over from the first game. The enemy diversity does not not feel at all rich in this game with some favorites such as the hydra the cockatrice currently missing from the lineup this does have a massive impact on how we interact with the game and the more enemy variety there is across different areas of the game the more we have to think on our feet moment to moment and of course consider our skill allocation and itemization choices this for me is paramount when playing rpg games and seeing that the leaks about the rumored dlc claims that there are 10 new big monster types along with 35 new regular enemy types, I am very hopeful Capcom have this in order. The leaker also highlighted that they saw a giant bear spider and giant snow troll amongst other things. We do, of course, folks, as with all rumors and leaks, have to take this with a pinch of salt, but nonetheless,
nevertheless very exciting stuff. If you're looking for a near invulnerable, infinite stamina mystic spear hand build, this next video has got you covered. Take care of yourselves, keep having fun, and I'll see you in the next one.